Hello and welcome to the next stage of this build which is a lean-to roof. As you can see it's got three Veloxes in it so I'll show you how to set all those out and we'll go through how basic things like how I get my pitch but let's go around the back now and we'll have a look at where we are and what we start with. If you haven't already seen last week's video which is this one that is on the screen now we've already got the wall plate set so let's get started. Morning Mick. Good morning. So Mick's just set the ladders up for us now. We're going to start here first and we're going to go to round about the middle of the uh, third course down from the windowsill just so we've got a good upstand for our lead work and to fit our uh, venting and what have you on at the top. So we'll set these ladders up. We've got some 9 b 2 and the reason it's 9 b 2 is because when we've cut the 8 b 2 the plum cut on the, on the rafter, it's going to be about that length and you need to try where possible to have full coverage on your plum cut, full bearing, if you like, on the timber. 9 by 2 plates on the wall now. That's screwed on for now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out what my pitch of my roof is um, and the method, and I'll show you the method that I use to get the angle and the plum cut and everything. So what you should do every time is set your crown first on your timber, and that means look down the, the timber like that and see which way the round is, if any at all. It looks like this left-hand side is the crown. So what I normally do, get an arrow. So I know that now is the top when I come to use it because you want the crown up so when the weight deflects down, it straightens the timber, in effect. If you do it the opposite way, then it'll, it'll exaggerate the crown if it's the wrong way around. That's what we do. Okay, so the next thing you do is, I'm using 8 by 2 which in, all, in new money is just under 200 mil. So I'm going to go for, uh, I'm going to go for about 65 mil, I think. 65 mil for my bird's mouth because you can't go any more than a third for your bird's mouth. Um, so that's what you have to do. So what I'll do now is, Mick, can you uh, hold that for me, please? Okay, so all I'll do now, on the top, which we know is this one, I mark 65 mil on there like that. 65 mil on there like that. This will all become clear in a minute. Then what I'll do is, you put the timber on your line, allowing a bit of overhang there like that. And this may be a bit too long, so we'll have to have a see. That should be okay. Okay. okay, so you put put the bottom of your timber on your 65mm line, like that. And then what you do is, that bit now sits on top of the the top of the of the plate on the wall. So as you can imagine, the plate that's on the wall now. I'll get this, I'll stick that end on top of the wall plate and this end will sit on top of the plate. Because what you've done now is, because you're going to be cutting the bird's mouth down 65 mm this, this end, I've just picked the, to get the same angle, I've picked the other end up 65 mm So you get your angle. And all you do then is you put, rest it on the top, and I'll, I'll show you in a minute, and then you just mark a level line on here, once you've got it in place, and that's your plum cut. It's that simple. You can use it on small roofs and big roofs, it just works every time. And there's no maths or, or books or and squares involved, it's just easier. Right then. As you can see, all I've done is I've used that to rest on top of there. Because ultimately this top, once the plum cuts on it, will go against that plate. And because I'm going to be dropping that end 65mm when I put the bird's mouth on, if I pick this end up 65mm, it gives me the same angle. So all I do now is I'll get my level. I mark a level line down there, and that is my plum cut. And this is that simple. And then all you do then is you measure from here, from that point, down to the cavity side of your um, wall plate, which is the, out, the, the, the outside. And then that's your length then. Marked a level line on there now, while it's in situ. Got my roofing square. Set it on there, like that. Set my square. And that is about 17 and a half degrees, which is pretty good. 
that's pan toilable and that makes just pointed out it's more than pan toilable so that's good so we'll uh, cut our first rafter we'll try it that end in the middle and this end for a pattern and hopefully we should be all good but we can't guarantee that that house wall is upright because we know the bottom is parallel with strong. the bottom of the house but uh after putting that wall plate on just we know that uh, it's not flat so let's hope let's have a look i took a measurement now from the top of that wall plate there i can stand on here without falling off and you measure to the outside corner of your wall plate so from there up to there and that's what you, that's where your bird's mouth sits. Your bird's mouth sits on there and down the back of there. So we'll get that measured, get that cut. I'll just show you how we do that. For now, so all I generally do is I've got a little square. So I'll set that to 65 mil. You pull it from your point that I've just cut. You come down to roughly where you think it's going to be. Set your square to 65 mil. Make a mark at 65 mil across the top of there. And then when you pull your line, you in, you intersect or dissect that line that you just put on with this, this square. And that's the, the top corner of your bird's mouth. That's your line now. So it's your 65 mil up, which is depth of your bird's mouth. And that line there is 3868, which we've got to there. And if you haven't got one of these, it's worth investing. You can get these in a six inch version. But I don't think you can get this particular one, standing one anymore in a 12 inch, but there is others available now, so. And then you just use that then to mark your plump cut. Turn it round and mark your seat cut on there. And then you cut that out and then you sit it over the top of your wall plate. Let's do that then. First bird's mouth cut. The only thing we are going to have to do, because of the size of the lintel and we haven't got much brickwork above it, we are going to have to cut over that lintel, which is a bit of a pain, but we haven't really got a choice. We're okay here because these aren't as big, so it doesn't stick up so much. But of course, this is a three metre span. That's actually a, a 3.6 lintel, I think that one. So we've um, it sticks up higher, which is unfortunate. But uh, we'll have a quick look and hopefully because we've probably got about 50 mil there, we're only going to have to take about 15 mil off or so. But rather than do it beforehand and make it look rubbish, I'll put it up and then make a mark. But it stands a chance it's going to be something sort of like that and then sort of down at an angle like that, I reckon. But I'll work that out now and we'll uh, try and get a pattern cut. Like I've already said to you, we'll try it then in three separate places to make sure this fits. And then we'll go from there. We can just pattern cut this one, drop it on top of one of these, cut it, mark around it, Cut it and off we go. So all we do with pattern, stick that on top of your uh, your rafter now, individual. Make sure the top is always flush. Now, it's a bit different now. I mean, nowadays, the timber is all pretty regularised, but years ago, you had to make sure this did all the time because there was never standard timber. So, and so that's my cut out for the steel. So there's 14 of them just to go across here to that point. So what I'll do then is, rather than mark around it again, because what you don't do is mark around this and end up any any exaggerating any possible um, discrepancy. So I'll just mark in the corner there like that. That one doesn't matter. Mick will mark that there as well on that end on the plum cut. And then we'll use a square again then to mark these through top and bottom. That's what we do.
Oh, we got a bit carried away, we started to put them on. I was gonna show you something before I did that. All I did first was, I've gone along, we've set it where all the veloxes are going, and I've marked them all on the wall plate here now. So as we go across, I'll go up this end and take, put, nail that end to the plate. Mick will come across, nail the bottom, and then we'll just reference off this every single time to get make sure we're, we're all nice and parallel all the way in. And like I've just said, what we have done, first of all, is aesthetically, we have put the Velox centre of this window and we've come the same distance in from the wall that's going to be about there. It's going to in the in the house all the way up to the top because the other side of the wall is going to be the doorway there and a bit of a um, walk through from the utility. So we've um, from that wall to the centre of this Velox is the same as from that wall to the centre of that Velox and then we put one in the centre. That's all we've done. So I think what we'll do now is we've got all our... Uh, I'll say all of them. We've got half the rafters cut. The ones that are going over this, this lintel, 14 of them. Uh, and we have cut that one as well. Just so uh, tomorrow, Adam's got the um, the reference for putting his block work in up there to fill that in tomorrow. Because um, the scaffold's coming Tuesday, I think, now. Because we couldn't get it any quicker. So, unfortunately, it's just really busy. So, unless we'd have had it here for all of it. But uh, we'd have had a scaffold out there and... You know, but anyway, we've got all the trestles set up, so we're okay here. So that's what we'll do. I'll set a bit of a time lapse up now, I think, and we'll just uh, fire these rafters on. time lapse then you sort of pull these up and fire them in place and what we've now done off camera is we've um got a we use a good quality grab adhesive on the doubles we then nail them every 12 inches or so all the way up top and bottom and then what we'll do then is we'll uh, put some of the old um turbo coach screws in as well after once we know the whereabouts of the the top and bottom um top and bottom of the velux we don't want to put a bolt in and then having to put the timber across the top and bottom and it be in the way so we'll do that after. Right, good morning, start of a new day today. Okay, so full disclosure, start the video, I had to refilm it. Are you laughing at me, it's ain't funny. I, I was purely bad. So I start the video, uh, I might as, well have, might as well have had someone else's tongue in my mouth because I'd send it a right moron. So I've had to refilm it and I probably don't sound any better, do I? So I've had some, anyway, I've had a good dose of uh, man up and some there there cream rubbed all over my chest. So I'm gonna get on with it. So that will turn you around and show you where we are now. You would have already seen that we've already got these set, all the doubles, everything set, other than the top and bottom of the Velux. Now what we're we doing? Good morning, Michael. Good morning. Look at the beautiful day today. It's a lot better day, isn't it? Anyway, um, we've already got our pattern set, as you know. We're gonna use the final one that we've already cut out for the lintel. If you remember that from about 30 seconds ago it's been four days ago for me but there you go we'll use that one to finish off uh over there somewhere one of these anyway because we've got them cut and then what we'll do is we will we'll just cut out the bird's mouth instead without that bit and then we'll continue across there we've got another velox to put in the middle of this window as i already told you and we'll work our way across and then what we'll be doing, we're moving into things like bolting that on. We've got the bolts now. We've got to put the wall plate straps across here. And then we've got to put the coach screws in the doubles. And then this is ready to start putting the uh, lath and felt on. However, we are going to make a bit of a scaffold, timber scaffold. Because if you remember back from earlier videos, a lot earlier, we've actually got to replace that window there. That's dead. That's coming out. If you remember, when we put the steel in, if you've been watching this all the way through from the loft, that is where the steel went. So we lintled across that and put the steel on there. Oh, no, we didn't lintle, did we? We blocked it in, didn't we? Yes, we put, see, even the, I, can't, I can't remember. There's blocks behind that window and we put the steel on there, which is one of the steels that went that way for the loft, if you remember. So that's got to come out. That was what originally the old toilet window, the separate toilet. So that's got to come out and be blocked in, but we want to make a bit of a scaffold for Ad to stand on to allow him to do that better, and then we'll get a new window. So back on track, we'll get this started, we'll get this finished, and hopefully 
It's size as beautiful as this. What I'll quickly do is explain what was happening in the time lapse. Uh, I've gone off pattern now because the original pattern, as you know, went over the lintel, which is uh, above me now. So we've changed the pattern. So we've only got to do one bird's mouth as opposed to what looked like two. So let me just turn you around. So when I tried pattern over there, we discovered that that rafter length was eight mil bigger from about the next rafter because this is all pattern so far. Beautiful or lovely, sits lovely, nice and flat. And then it starts to creep and the rafter starts to need to be longer. But what we've discovered is, is that from the doorway of, of butt up to the, the plate that we've put on the wall there, which is that one, the wall goes in. So if I just go inside and try and tell you more, we made sure this wall plate was, was lovely. We know the bottom is parallel because we made sure of that. We made sure that this wall plate, as you would have seen in the previous video, is parallel from there to the wall there. But we've discovered that from that point, literally just where that waste pipe is there, that we've, we've all redone now, if you hadn't already noticed, it, the wall starts to go in a little bit there from about this point, meaning that rafter's eight mil longer. Now, eight mil doesn't seem a lot. Um, and we can, what I can say is when I've put my, I stood on top of that wall earlier and I've run my eye across to that rafter and there's, there's hard, what, see what? Uh, let's go back a little bit. If you don't get all everything parallel and level, what happens is you can put a rafter on and if you measure them individually, let me just come out a little bit. If you measure them individually, let's say I'm starting from this first one. So you put your first one on, 17 degrees. Then what happened is as you went, if your rafter got longer for argument's sake, because that wall wasn't prone, that wall was shooting off that way, your, your, your rafter had start to start to twist, or sorry, it started to go that way, start to be lower, and you'd end up with a roll in your roof that's why you need to make sure everything's flat and square. But because that end's going in and this end's good and it's parallel, by increasing by eight mil, which in effect is nearly, near as damn it, one mil rafter length longer from that point that way, which is what I've been doing. So instead of using one pattern, I've took a measurement, as you know, from there, I've just said, eight mil longer, that one is. And because it's from about here, I know I've got 10 rafters, so I've just added, well, I've, the first two I've just took off the line out. And I've numbered them, one, two, three, four. So I put them on now, and these are all one mil bigger than the last one was. Or there is there, or damn it anyway. Just over a thickness of pencil line bigger. Every rafter. But every time it's measured off the one before it, so it's in effect, it's one pe pencil fill, pe pencil, oh, blah, blah, blah. one pencil thickness bigger than the last one every time. So I'll jump up now. I'll make sure these fit just to make sure I am on track and I'm not going too long. Now, as much as I don't want to do it, because as you can see there, all my bird's mouths are all lovely and tight on my wall plates because I like to make sure they're tight. What I don't want to do is end up sort of pulling or dropping it so it's flush at the top of that plate there and having a gap at the back of my... Um, my bird's mouth. I don't want to do that because it doesn't look good. Um, so I shall check it anyway. That's why I want to stop now. Do these four, check it, make sure I'm not going too long uh, and I can adjust if necessary for the remaining four. That's what I'm going to do now. I'll jump up now. I'll try that and then what I'll do is I'll stick on a very quick time lapse and I'll just rattle these in once I've got them all fixed and then uh, we can talk about the next stages of your um, lean-to roof. That's what we'll do next. Okay then, so the, the rafters I just told you about with regards to keeping them one mil bigger every time. As you can see, other than the round in the timber, oh, dear me, nearly fell off of that, didn't it? So it's, uh, there's a little bit of a round there, so it's touching, missing top and bottom, but that's around the timber, what can I do about it? So I've made sure all these are flush on the top. They're all now flat, all now nice and tidy. The plum cuts are all fully bared against the wall plate. 
the bolted wall plate if you want to distinguish between that one and that one that's what i call the bolted wall or the, the plate on the wall whatever you want to call it i'm sure i'll get some comments as to what other people call it which i appreciate that'd be good i've always called it the bolted wall plate anyway and then i've made sure that all these are all bared down properly that one a little bit but there's a twist in this but that's a double this there's a if you remember we've reused this and i think what's happened is this timber has gone sort of gone like that along its length and, and rolled a little bit so even though this one the next one's good flat there's a bit of a twist so it's not sitting flat like the next one there's flat that one isn't so there must be a bit of a bit of a twist in the wall plate there hence it's only catching the front edge but that is a double and that should be good anyway so i've got three remaining now three there what i'm gonna do i oh know as i said to you already this is eight mil bigger so now i'll work down i'll get pattern i'll add eight mil on and then i'll not pencil thickness off for the last three because i know it worked this is fit perfect per hold on what perfect and like there look you can see that's all nice Ooh, bent nail look okay and most of it's not so that there is perfect on the back of there that's what you want you want that tight to there and you want that tight to there yes you can tweak a little bit but i mean in, in what you can do sometimes you can actually tweak your wall plate if you need to just give it a tapper so that's rolled there as well look so that gap there that isn't my carpentry i can assure you that because the plum cut seat cut's good it's just because you can see the plum cut on the bird's mouth is good it's just this timber is slightly rolled over honest governor that'll stand up in court do you reckon anyway so i'll cut these three now i'll fire these three on and that's this roof in terms of the lean-to part of it the structure all on and if you can just see if you can see across there does that look you can just sort of see they're all flat and there's a couple of these have got quite high crowns on them so i expect them to uh to settle especially with the weather having a bit warmer a bit wetter so they'll settle quite easily so i shall leave them to what i didn't do is put the heavy crowns together on the um on the doubles so <clears throat> I've made sure the flat ones are on the doubles so they haven't got to settle because they won't settle as easy. So a majority of the high crown ones, if you like, the bad crown ones are the singular, so they will settle better. So that'll be all good then. Right, I'll crack on with these then and I'll tell you about what the next stage will be and more than likely in the next episode. Right, last raft has just gone in. Other than setting up a ladder frame over there, because I think I'm asking this ladder frame, it's not. <coughs> We're doing this traditional, this side. Ad's gonna cut the bricks and then lay them and then do exactly the same as that. But on this side over there, because we don't wanna have to cut the bricks unnecessarily and create more work, we should do a barge board over there instead, down the side of there. And then the um, we can just go over the top and Ad can just cut his bricks so a bit more uh, crudely, should we say to suit the the actual pitch rather than to cut them exact because you're going to see them ultimately like this one over here so what i'll do now is oh before i carry on the reason i haven't put the top and bottom on i kept saying i'm not going to do it yet the reason i haven't done it yet is because for one reason only when you've got this instance where you can those of you that um have fitted velox before and if you want to see how I fitted the ones on the front, where well, I talked about it quite in depth, if I remember rightly, look at this video, which is on our channel. So I won't go into too much depth when I fit these ones, but because you have to set your window and then you normally come down from the bottom of your window with your lath to put your, come down 80 mil to, to match the instructions with your lath to catch your row of tiles. So the bottom flashing kit goes on. <coughs> Excuse me. What I'll do is instead, instead of doing that and then not getting the gauge right, when I know where we are with the, the fascia board, which I'll set out in a minute, I shall gauge up with my proper tile gauge then. Oh, hello. Here he is. Look. Oh, he's back with loads of insulation. There we are. Um, so instead of messing about and doing that, what I'll do is I'll take this uh, opportunity to cut my fascia off, set my... Um, these protectors on and then gauge up with my tile and then when i come to about the point where i think that's where i want the bottom of the velox anyway i shall set that lath and then i shall then put my timber in across the bottom to suit 80 mil in from that lath rather than do it the opposite way around because i'm not retrofitting i'm fitting brand new so it pays to do it that way instead and then i can get them all in line and then of course i can get the that measurement up the roof then and put the top one on so that's why i haven't done them yet 
it's a lot not more efficient i think a lot better and it saves having to duplicate work when you've already done it and what you don't want to do is put those in especially in this instance and then having to move your gauge down and, and be off gauge and one row of tiles be below the other one it's not as if you're working on a roof and you're retrofitting which is what you might have to do in that instance but there's no need to have this right i shall leave it there now i think what we'll do is um we'll stop here now as the end of the episode and then the next time you see um, me on this roof, I'll be bolting all of the uh, timber onto the wall, the one that you had the wall plate I talked about, that you temporarily screwed on. I should be putting the wall plate straps on and setting out ready for the face and soffit. And then knock on effect of that is I can start gauging for my felt and lath, set the roof out, and then put the last timbers in, which I've just talked about, top and bottom of the Velox. Right, see you next time. Thanks for watching.